Okay, here's the sweatshirt I have. It's, I think, a 4XL, and I wear about a size small, so it's it's big. We have a lot to work with. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take the ribbing off of the cups, cuffs. The ribbing is the st stretchy part, so I'm going to take that off both of these, and I'm going to take it off the bottom also and around the neckline. So I'll just take a sharp pair of scissors and cut right along those seams. Okay, I've got the cuffs and the collar and the bottom cut off, and then now I have it turned inside out. What I need to do is figure out how much smaller it needs to be. So I've got an old shirt of mine, this kind of a sweatshirt, that fits good. And I'm going to lay it on here, matching up one of my shoulder seams with this one. And then I'm going to measure what's left. <laughs> so you can see I need it to be about half as big as it is. So I'm going to measure that distance. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a seam just in the back. I'm going to fold this evenly. And I'm going to sew a seam from the top to bottom. And I need to, um, I have about 14 inches too much. So I'm going to sew 7 inches over all the way down. And that's going to make the back just that much smaller. But I only want to do it on the back right now. I've got it folded in half down the back, so you can see that's where your tag would be. And I'm taking in seven inches using a ruler and just using some Taylor's chalk to mark it. Now, this gets kind of tricky up here, though, because it'd be pretty easy if I was still within the neck edge, but I'm taking it out so much I'm past the neck edge, so just kind of have to lay it flat. Make sure that those shoulder seams line up. Pin it, and then just so to that seam. Don't go past that because then you're going to be on the front. And we want some, we're going to do the front a little different. So just try to get those shoulder seams to line up and then take that in. Now remember, this is now, this line right now is going to be this part. So we're going to eventually cut the hole even bigger than this. Anyway, pin it and then we're just going to stitch down the back to make it smaller. All right, once you have it sewn, then you can cut off your extra fabric. Just leave a little bit of a seam allowance and go ahead and snip that all the way. And then I also want you to snip, just snip this down to your, um, this is your top shoulder seam. Snip it down to where your seam allowance would be so we can just totally remove that chunk. And then save this because you're going to use it later for something. The next step we need to do is take in the arms because these are way wide. So get it laid out as flat as you can. I want this seam down here nice and flat. Now your shoulder seam won't be on top, but make sure this is on top, or wide. Just sort of bunch that up a little bit there. And then when you've got that laid out nice and flat, take your template shirt and lay it out. And we want to make sure that this edge lines up down here. And then figure out how wide your sleeves need to be. Pull it up so that this edge lines up and you want this edge to line up. And then we're going to take our tailor's chalk and we're going to draw a new line. Now when you get to your new armhole, just do a nice curve. And then try to end where this seam hits here. Actually, if you want to go down a little bit, somehow you have to transition to, into this area. This is going to be kind of tricky. We'll just have to see how it goes. So try to flatten that out. Put in a new curve here and go out. And then sew it and trim it. I've got both sleeves taken in. I've got it turned right side out. I want to try it on, but in order to do that I need to open up this neck edging. So you can see this is your back and you have your seam there that we did before. This is going to be the front. We haven't trimmed that yet. I want you to open this. Take at least three, probably four inches back on each side. Open that up and then you can try it on and see how it, how your sleeves fit and how it's doing. Okay, once you've got your seam sewn, you can turn it right side out and try it on. I found that my armpit seemed a little tight, and thankfully I'd left kind of a big seam allowance for my test um, run. So I went back and made my that armpit curve just a little bit bigger so I had a little more room in the armpit. And then when I was finally done, I went back and um, clipped my seam allowance uh, pretty short. If you don't make that seam allowance um, small, when you flip it right side out, 
this isn't going to lay flat, especially through this corner. It's going to like bunch and pucker and look funny. So the way to get that seam to look nice and smooth and curved is to keep your seam allowance really small. Now, this trouble area down here is still a problem. You see how it's not laying really smooth and nice? What I think I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take a tuck right here and sew that up like that. And it's still going to kind of have a pucker to it, but I think it looks a little bit more visually interesting, like it was a deliberate thing, like an architectural feature, as opposed to a um, mistake. So, at least that's, that's what I'm going to try to do right now. And this is the bottom of the armpit, where, where we're trying to join the side. There's no side seam, so we just sort of puttered out into the side from the bottom of the armpit. And it's just not wouldn't lay flat, so then when I stitched it, it's still not quite flat. And yeah, I'm still working on that. Okay. Now you have to decide what to do with the front. If you want to just leave it this kind of bunchiness, you want to cut it and um, fold it over. I'm going to think about that, and I'll be back in a little bit. Alright, this is the front side, and we still have all this extra fabric on the front. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to cut this down the middle. So I'm going to fold it so that that front edge is lined up in the middle. Look at my shoulder seams and stuff and line that up, and I'm just going to snip that. Okay, I have the sweater on my mannequin right now, so you can kind of see what it looks like. And we have a lot of overlap here in the front. I don't want quite that much overlap. I actually just want it to overlap with my um, neck edge right here. And this is personal preference how you want to do it. So I'm going to mark where my neck is right here. So I'm going to trim this to be that much narrower. I don't want it quite that big. And I'll do the same to this point here. I'll take the same off both sides. If we turn it around on the back, you can see I've kind of gone up for some reason. I don't want that. I want just a normal neck edge. So I'm going to mark kind of a nice curve. And we'll trim that also. One more thing we're going to trim is after we um, cut this down, I want to get rid of this. Ooh, this thing is wobbly. I want to get rid of this wonky flap. I mean, if you wanted to leave that, you could and just hit and be done. But I'm actually going to put a cowl neck on it, so I'm going to round this off. I'll be able to see that on the cutting table, I think, fine. So I'm just going to kind of round that nice and down, trim that, and trim my back neck edge. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to curve the front edge. So this is my neck edge up here, front edge, bottom. I don't want my front seam to be just straight. I actually decided I wanted to curve it. So what I've done is I found a top in my closet that have a, has a curved front edge. I have this little blouse. And actually that's the back edge that's curved on the blouse. But we're going to use it as the front edge of this. So I'm going to line that curve up with my top trim it, and then I'll use this piece as a guide to trim the other side. So I'm basically those two front flaps that overlapped, I'm giving them a curved edge on the bottom. Okay, the next step is to put a collar on it. So I've cut a strip four inches wide, and I don't know how long it is, I just made it extra long. I had to put seams in it though, because I'm just using the scraps. I'm going to fold it in half, so my collar is going to be just a piece that's about that long sticking up and I'm going to pin it to my neck edge and stitch it. Now I lined up my seams. I have two seams and I'm going to line those up with my shoulder seams just because I'm kind of particular that way. If I'm going to have seams in it, I want them to line up. So this is the neck edge on my sweater. And I'm going to line these seams up and just stitch this on right sides together. And also we'll come around here. And I'll probably have some extra, and I'll just trim that off after I sew it on. 
Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to find some sort of closure. So try it on and overlap it and see where it lays. Good. And then you're going to find some sort of a closure. You could, you could actually cut a, a slit in one side and put a button on here and button it. You could do like a frog closure. You could do a hook on an eye. I'm actually using a something off of a purse. A purse that was old and had fallen apart. So I have this interesting clasp thing. That's going to be my closure. And the last thing I'm going to do, which you don't need to do, but I'm going to do um, some cuffs. The sleeves seem a little short, so I'm going to add some fabric for cuff and just to make that finish. So I cut a strip six inches by, well, whatever feels good around your wrist. Mine's pretty small. I have small wrists. The only reason why there's a seam here is that just worked out that my scraps, I had to have a seam in order for the scraps to work. So you open that up. Sew it like that, so you have a big tube, and then when you flip it, that's going to be your cuff, like that. So then you need to attach that to the end of your sleeve. To do that, let's see here, I think I want to turn my sleeve inside out. Put this inside. I'm going to line up my seam with my arm seam. Then we're going to stitch them together. Now, the cuff is smaller. Boy, not much smaller. I think you could gather it. You could put some folds in it. I actually think I just might kind of stretch it and sew it on there because they're very close to the same size. I'm going to attach those together. And then you should be about done. Okay, I tried wearing it with just the clasp here, and something I was afraid of that was going to happen did happen, and that's that this part kind of slouches down after a while. So we need to um, put another closure on the inside here to hold that part of the collar over and stiff. So I tried it on, and I got it kind of lined up where I wanted it, and then I marked a spot where I'm going to put, I'm just going to put a snap, so I'm going to find the biggest snap I can find, that one looks pretty big, and stitch that on there. So half of it here and half of it here. Now when I stitch it to this side, I was very careful to put the snap where the collar was because I can just stitch it to one thickness and then it won't show on here. If I had put it down here, then you'd be able to see those stitches. So I'm going to put it up here on the collar and just attach it to one side of my fabric. So I've got my two dots. So one there, one there. And that's going to hold that part and then it won't flop down or get all wonky. Hi, just wanted to share the finished product with you, um, the finished project, and talk about some of the things that we did. So, you see now it's got um, this nice big neckline and finished cuffs. We left some of our seams finished, some of them raw. So this whole edge along here is raw, but our cuffs and collar are finished. Found an interesting clasp to use. One thing I would have done differently if I had thought it through is on the back, I wish I had left this a little bit wider. So if you think about it, this seam translates down to your hips and also into the front to your bust. And really that's kind of your shoulder width and back is the smaller of those three measurements because this is long enough that it's a little bit, comes down over your hips and you need a little bit more width through the hips. Well, some of us do, I do. And then of course in the bust, you need more. So what I ended up doing is the front is wider than the back and that's, if they were the same, this would be over quite a bit farther. So it kind of angles down a little bit to compensate for that issue. Stand up straight. I got this um, dress form free from a friend, and um, now I know why it was free. It's very wobbly and crooked. Anyway, because it's wider in the front also, it throws your um, shoulder seams back and off a little bit. It's the kind of thing that another seamstress would notice. Uh, another person who sews would catch those little details, but most people aren't going to notice that your shoulder seams are off a little bit and that this is not lined up with up here. So, good enough for something free that we just chopped up and had some fun with. So, I hope you enjoyed this project and that you learned something from it. Have a great day.